Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Beat Final Fantasy VIII with me, Get Daved. This... This is it. I hope you like... heavily affected speech. And the letter K. Today's episode is brought to you by the letter K and the number 8. Seed, seed, seed. She's having a stroke. Curse all seeds. Time compression. So, is death beyond death? Well, thanks. Alright, so we get to deal with whoever it is. As long as we got Squalor Irvin, I'll be reasonably happy. Because then we'll have a good... Oh, okay, well. <laughs> In retrospect, I was asking for it. Alright, melt her down. Um, she has Apocalypse as a spell. It might be in a subsequent layer of the fight, because, spoiler, there's more than one mode. More than one gear to it. I don't think this is going to end well for you. There you go. Oh, but she's poisoned. and get Cerberus out here so we can have triple. All right. Let's see if my inputting's improved. Nope. <laughs> I don't have the pattern memorized, so. And circle square, or circle X. Oh, whatever, we got some pretty good damage. Uh, Maelstrom's no joke. So I think that halves your HP. Now's actually a pretty good time for Squall or Zell to limit break as well. Pretty sure she also has one that, uh, one sec, I gotta focus. There we go, I got the infinite puncher going on now. Booyah! I think she has an ability that reduces everyone to one hit point, which combined with, uh, poison is pretty dangerous. That's it, if Quistus dies... She'll get a substitute. Alright, I'm gonna try to set up Final Heaven. Not that I exactly know how to do that. I was too busy just doing the generic combo. All right, next phase. She talks a big game. All right, so phase two. We duke it out with a GF. All right, meet Griever, everybody. Remember that ring Squall had? It's of this guy. I don't know what it means, but... All 
right, does he have death immunity is the question. Oh, she does. Oh, shoot. Uh, there's Essena. Also, I really should take care of Zell's HP. We don't have uh, Meltdown on him. We're still getting really good damage though, so I'm okay with it. Let's see if we can get a... I want to get Final Heaven in here. Nah. No, it's not enough time now. Alright, it was some damage. And now we have triple. Good news, everyone. So yeah, if you or if you scan Griever. We can't because we don't have Squall. He's the only person with Scan right now. Uh, it'll tell you that Reaver's like made out of the fear in Squall's mind or something like that. And the most powerful GF. I don't know. Hard to imagine it being stronger than Reaver. Why do I have card on him? Also, we need to be just a little bit careful. I believe... Reaver does have some pretty strong abilities. I'm just trying to find an ability that'll look cool here. Uh, I want to see, like, Final Heaven or something. Oh yeah, there we go. It's pretty awesome. Get ready. It's a hard punch. Eh? Not bad, hey? <laughs> I feel like that one deserves to break the damage limit, but anyway. This is what we're waiting for, Meltdown. I knew there was something. There we go. Sorry everyone, I feel like it'd be more appropriate if Wall were here. And we're seeing a lot of this limit break, actually. We're just gonna let Zell die off. seen the best of what he's got to show. Didn't get a chance to show the Eden uh, summon. It's weird and goes on for a long time. That's what I gotta say about that. Oh, this is gonna take a while. There's Flare. It's pretty cool looking. Unfortunately, Oh yeah, he's got triple on too. This'll take forever. Might be worth casting the spell on him. I wonder if Griever's gonna be confused by us helping take care of Zell. There we are. Yes, fight the enemy. Eh. Finish the jobs out. Ooh. Um. We're just gonna make sure everybody's nice and buffed up here. 
I forget if Essen is gonna get rid of this. Yeah, I don't know. Don't know what the cure is. Okay, here we go. So remember how Quistus has this ability that can break the damage limit? Graver's got it too. Alright, the ending of the game, they just have really good magic defense. Also has quite the uh, musical overture. That was it? <laughs> MVP. Alright, another one of those creepy balls. The song's called Maybe I'm a Lion. Pretty great. Okay, we'll get Renault brought back. Don't worry, Zell's gonna be fine. But I do kind of want to show what happens. heaven with you. I think that's what it meant anyway. Oh, absorbed into time by a cherub. There we go. Now we've got got things as it should be. Because like, there's like a prophecy kind of about Squall. He's got to be the one. Good? No. Okay, knock him down. I mean, as weird as it is, I do think uh, Ultimate looks pretty cool in this setup. And Griever looks awesome. Oh, Ultima. Uh... Omega didn't hurt us too bad. If I've learned one thing. In most games, I heavily favor offense, but in this one, having 255 spirit is really good. So, if I could have changed something. I think I forgot to turn the battle speed back up. Oh well. Uh, if I could change one thing, it would be all those times... Squall didn't have spirit bonus equipped and he only had three abilities. I think I would have done spirit above magic this time around. Alright, I think he's done. Nope. again. I think I neglected to show it, but yeah, she does have Apocalypse, which you can draw even the first form. It's the same as Ultima. Um, its junctioning stats are also the same, although you can never junction it. Thanks, data mining. Okay, that's gotta be it. Alright, 
So remember how Ultimatia, she had sort of that exotic appearance. And she spoke in a very affected way. Keep that in mind. Because all that's going to be pulled away. We're going to see her true form. And normally that's a stupid thing, but in this one it's interesting. Also, enjoy the music and close your eyes and try to guess when the fight starts. I really like what they do from a narrative point of view with the music here. Right now you're wondering, did I do it? No. No, I did not. The song is called The Extreme. There's her real face. Speaking plainly now, no weird K's. Ever wonder why she kept possessing people? So we're just going to do a, the basics. Oh, wait. I remember this. So again, you can tell from the music, we're just feeling each other out here. Prepare yourself. If you can hear it. <laughs> it's a strange piece, and it's exotic, and it matches what we're doing really well. Those aren't of interest to me. There we go. So she's broken up into a whole bunch of phases, so even if you do a ton of damage, it's not enough. Also, the part in the music you couldn't hear because uh, Squall was limit breaking over it was it just segues in with the original Final Fantasy battle entry. But da -da 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 -da. And we'll just queue in some attacks.
A little bit of a mistake there. Got stuck leaning into command mode. What the heck is that? Oh, goodness. We lost Kiraga on Renoa. Congratulations on your promotion, Quistis. Also, two targets now. I don't really know which one I should be aiming at. Unless you think Invincible Moon is cheap, there's an item you can refine 10 of from Gilgamesh's card that makes everyone invincible with the item for money. to hit. Oh, well, the little one died somehow. That's fine, we don't need Meltdown. What's it ever done for me? And yes, she has a ton of hit points. Super dangerous attack combos aren't coming yet, though. With Hell's Judgment, though, you can never be safe. Well, I guess if everyone's invincible, you're doing alright. Good addition, Renoa. Reflect on your childhood. Remember the whole how we stay alive in a time compression thing. So I broke one of my rules here. I love how in the final battle, Squall's Renzo Kukin is much faster. Like, he's really going after her. A lot of people have speculated that Renoa is Ultimatia. It's one of the dumb theories about the game. Um, I don't think... Well, the creators also just said that's not the case. Don't think it makes any sense because she's possessing herself in the past, and that's weird. I don't know why, but a lot of uh, the cryptic lines here were seen as conclusive evidence. Oh, shoot. No matter how hard you hold on. She's talking like someone with regrets. What did it? She's just been a malicious malcontent this whole time. But again, now all the facades are stripped away. Learning a little bit about her. What she's saying now. She never finishes, though. Now she's dead. And 
welcome to the ending, everybody. Ultimash is toast. But what of the heroes? They're trapped. They gotta travel back somehow. That's right, you know where we're supposed to meet. We know when and where. And we're all a little worried whether or not Renault is going to be able to make it. I do like how trippy it is. She knows where she's trying to get to. I'll be waiting for you here, so if you come here, you'll find me. I promise. We've seen Renoa, Irvin, Selfie, Zell, and Quistus. No one ever suspected Squall might not be able to make it back, though. Can you think of a memory that might be redirecting him to the wrong place and time, though? You've seen it many times. find sis. That seed was planted a little too deep. He got back to the right place, but... Also, I want you to remember one thing. On three or four occasions, Squall has reflected about how he didn't turn out at all. Because he always remembered telling Sis, I'm going to be fine. And he always reflected, I didn't, I wasn't fine. Look what happened. Perfect. You can hear the theme. That's right, when a sorceress dies. Now you know how things started going sideways with Matron. So Ultimatia is truly dead, but a little loop does form, tying to Squall's past now. Not for you. You gotta get to the other side of the time loop. But they don't exist yet. she got the idea from pertaining to sorceresses. Yep, she put it together.
Oof. Confronting his most painful memory. future squall. Are you by yourself? There you go. The real journey of FF8, everybody. Squall learned he wasn't alone. Now we put that, uh, put that belief to the test. See, this is the stuff that makes it a beautiful game. This whole game's been Squall's journey to recover from that emotional wound we just saw. Am I alone? Well... That part is true. stuff about friendship and courage and love well this is his battle against that well against the antithesis of it not exactly the field of flowers he was supposed to go to bit of a walk ahead of him. Perhaps you're expecting the cliche where he'll circle around and find his own footsteps? Exactly. He's all alone, folks. And he was supposed to be waiting for Renoa there. thought she'd be the one who got lost. symbol of Renoa we're familiar with. Hard to remember in a place like this, though.
They danced together that night, didn't they? And Squall got to her in time. In space, right? Evil has a melody in this game. Just keep your ears open for it. That's not where that memory happened. And watch it very closely. It might be just one frame, but watch her face. Did you see it? But he did save the world. And he did regain what was lost before it all happened. And uh, if you really like eyes on me, here's a treat. Nice reversal of fortunes when Renoa wasn't able to wake up and Squall was able to help her. Renoa went back. time compression, so I'm not exactly sure how the rules work. But they got to the field. Now we get to find out what happened to everyone. This is actually one of my favorite little scenes. Caught a fish, but not cipher. Well, the good news for cipher is he sorted things out with his posse. Bad news is. Imagine Cypher being stuck on that dock, fishing. Life on that dock will never be in line with his ambitions. He should have been up on the garden. Wait for the leg cramp.
a little bit more symmetry with the relationship between Renault and Squall, because they have the matching rings, although Renault carries both of them on her chain. Just to clarify one story, but if you're unsure, Laguna did go back to Rain, but she was dead by the time she he arrived, and Squall had been taken away, so he never met his son. So he lost Julia, he lost Rain, he lost his son temporarily, and now you know why he was trying over and over and over and over, and why he never gave up trying to rescue alone. question is, what's going on on the garden? Did our friends make it back or not? Would you like to know? So FF7 had the very ambigu ambiguous ending. Six, almost idealistic. And uh, eight, it's got a nice personal touch, I think. Just like when they graduated to become seeds. A little bit of a party going on. Hey. <laughs> yeah, Sid's plan ended up working, I guess. Maybe not how we hoped, but... back in her traditional outfit from when she was herself. Like the little touch self, he's got his cowboy hat. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I don't know, I really like that it ends with a home movie. Yeah, hello ladies. <laughs> Just the little touches of personality. You can tell Irvin's holding the camera now. Oh, and Zell finally got his hot dogs. And the girl who likes him from the library. Unfortunately, maybe the hot dog got him in the end. Yeah, not how you wanted it to go. Alright, but the real question. Squall and Renoa, did it happen? She met Squall, she saw a shooting star. Squall and Renault are the only two that noticed it. They looked up and she asked him one dance. So the question is, what did she see? Did her boy wake up and is he standing right there? I mean, if you die in a time compression, 
exactly, you know, are, are you dead? Can it be salvaged? Is it that you're going to die if something doesn't happen? I mean, maybe, maybe he was just in a comatose state, like when it happened to Renault. We'll never know. So Final Fantasy VIII. What a bipolar game. Such strong, uh, really strong music overall. More so than I remembered it even. Fairly strong characters all throughout and they really grow and uh, establish themselves nicely. Um, the last FF game I think I played was 15 and that didn't really happen and I was kind of disappointed. But replaying this one, I mean, yeah, the crew's awesome. Even at first, like, you kind of don't like most of them, but they sort of grow on you and you get to know them, and that's fantastic. And now we're going to listen to the music for a bit, because it's just perfect. Maybe one more scene. We've already had the ambiguous ending, after all. There you go, everyone. The third perfect ending. The game itself is all over the place, but it does the characters well, and it does the story well. And what works about it is... Okay, something I've seen a lot lately, and maybe it was always around and I just didn't notice before, but plots that are only about themselves we need to stop this guy because that's what the plot of the story is. And you have a plot that isn't about anything else. I'm not just talking about a moral to the story. I'm just talking about any concept of depth whatsoever. And you, you don't have any satisfaction because then when you reflect on it, uh, there's just nothing there. FF8 does this very well because superficially we've got a plot about time compression and sorceresses and all these things. But as we see at the end, really this is a journey of a person who feels alone and is unable to form proper relationships and is miserable and doesn't know why and learns to love and be loved in return and it's Renault is the main vehicle for it as you know a traditional sort of love story but it's also about his friends and letting them into his world and how by doing that he actually becomes the person he should have be all of his potential is realized and even at the very end the whole thing is he's got this test you know, do you believe that you're not alone? Do you believe your friends will come for, to him? And the perfect thing is he fails that and his friends come. He doesn't succeed on his own merits. He succeeds because someone who cared about him came back to help him. And I think that's a lovely lesson, a lovely story. And thank you for watching, everybody.
I'll see you all in the next Let's Play.